What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be showing off Tord Reklev's Malmo Regional Championship winning Zacian V, Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia GX deck. This is largely considered to be the best deck in format right now, and I really love what Tord has done with his regional winning list. He has stripped the deck down to just the bare bone essentials. If it doesn't have to do with Arceus, Dialga, Palkia, or Zacian V, it's pretty much not in this deck. In fact, the only utility Pokemon that he has in the list are Resource Management Oranguru and Primate Wisdom Oranguru, which arguably are just there to help you execute the primary strategy of the deck, which is to use Altered Creation GX or Zacian V more effectively. And I love this list. He's taken the Tag Call Engine out of the deck. So no Guzma and Hala, which I am thankful to see because I'm not a super big fan of that card. Instead, we've got Acro Bikes in their place to help you churn through the deck, as well as Energy Spinners to help you fix your energy in order to use Arceus, Dauga, and Palkia's Alter Creation GX or Ultimate Ray. Just two water energy and eight metal energy is some of the lowest energy counts that we have seen in any of the ADP lists so far. And just two metal frying pans to turn off the Zacian V's weakness and make them a little bit more bulky. You can see that we have a major focus on consistency with this list with four copies of Zacian V. You want to open Zacian V every game, especially if you're going first, so that you can pull off an Intrepid Sword and boost your hand size. And then also we've got two copies of Dedenne GX. Many lists were running just one Dedenne GX or maybe none at all. But in Tord fashion, he's playing two copies of Dedenne GX and just going along with that philosophy. If I just draw more cards than my opponent, play the most consistent list that I can, I will do well at the tournament. So Tord put that strategy to work at the Malmo Regional Championships. We can also see it's got a little bit of a different supporter count as well. For research, the most powerful draw supporter in standard right now, and only two copies of Marnie with no reset stamps and just two Marnies to disrupt the opponent's hand size. But it doesn't really matter if you're disrupting the opponent's hand if you win the game in three to four turns, which is what this deck sets out to do every single game. Going for a quick Alter Creation GX followed by Zacian V, Brave Blade after Brave Blade for 260 damage and two copies of Shrine of Punishment to bring 270 and 280 hit point tag team GXs into the fold to be able to get KO'd by Zacian V. Now we do have the four custom catchers as well as one great catcher in the list to target down threats on the opponent's bench. Now against decks like Dolls, these could run low. We don't have any Pokemon catchers or anything like that. We saw Pedro's top 32 list ran four Pokemon catchers and four custom catchers. This list just has the five gust effect cards and you can only get a couple of gust effects with the custom catchers, one guaranteed gust effect with a great catcher. So in order to circumvent that, we've got the one copy of resource management Oranguru, which can help to win games by putting custom catchers back in the deck, but also great against Galarian Obstagoon. Talking to Tord in the Twitch chat the other day, Tord said that he likes the, the Oranguru in the deck, even though he didn't use it at all at the Malmo Regional Championships. He really liked the idea of Oranguru because you can resource manage to get the custom catchers back, but you can also use Profound Knowledge against a Galarian Obstagoon using Obstruct. So if your opponent is playing Galarian Obstagoon and they have completely paired their board position down to just one Obstagoon using Obstruct, you can actually still confuse that Obstagoon and make it more difficult for them to pull off back-to-back -back Obstruct attacks, forcing them, in essence, to put another bench Pokemon down in order to switch and giving you an opportunity to gust and then take a prize. So that is a useful strategy against the Glarian Obstagoon deck. Profound knowledge since Obstruct does not stop any sort of special conditions on the Obstagoon, just damage. So I love this list. Let's get into some gameplay and see how it works. One of my favorite things about this list is that you can compete with decks that should, on paper, even be bad matchups, like... Baby Blacephalon. You can disrupt that deck enough with Marnie and use your Altered Creation GX and then 
just take a couple of key knockouts in order to win the game, which is absolutely huge. Then against decks like Malamar, which can use the Mimikyu with Copycat as well as Clear Vision GX to completely negate your ability to Altered Creation GX, you can still win that game as well with a quick and efficient Zacian V Brave Blade. It's just a very hard strategy to defend against when your opponent, um, when uh, it's a very hard strategy to defend against. Brave Blade just dealing 230 damage is absolutely wild. So we do have the Metal Saucer, and then I'm just gonna attach the Metal Energy to my active and go with that turn one Intrepid Sword, which is one of the reasons why this deck is just so insane is because it loves going first, more so than any deck in standard format. It doesn't really care that you don't get to play a supporter turn one going first. You threaten so much turn two with a turn two altered creation going first that I have seen a lot of decks try to come up with ways to combat the strength of this deck's turn one, be it wait and see hammer, crushing hammers, uh, all sorts of strategies to try and remove that turn one energy attachment from the RCS Dialga GX because once altered creation GX is announced, the game really gets out of hand because you only have to take a couple of knockouts. Like I'm looking at Walter Creation GX next turn, and then Gust up to Dene. That's three prizes right there. Three prizes on a Dene on turn three. And then I only have to take one more two prize knockout in order to win the game. Looks like we were playing against a Welder box deck and they do have the Volcanion. So they're going to be able to Flare Starter onto a Reshiram and Charizard. Get a ton of energy built up over there which is a pretty strong turn one for them. Now, even if they do take a knockout on my Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia, I'm not gonna give them another three prizers. So I'm going to have the two turns that I need to potentially win the game with Zacian V. We do find the Shrine of Punishment. Unfortunately, I don't have a great way um, to preserve this Metal Saucer. Well, no, to preserve this Custom Catcher. I do have a good way to preserve the Metal Saucer by using it, so we are gonna do that. I'm going to Great Catcher, get that Metal Energy into the discard pile and bring up the Dedenne GX, hopefully disrupt just a little bit. We've got the Saucer there, the Shrine, and I'm going to use the Custom Catcher because we really are trying to find ourselves that Water Energy. Unfortunately, losing another Saucer, which is getting a little bit sketchy, but I think we will be okay. And we're gonna grab ourselves the Oranguru because we do need to just dig here for that water energy. And we do find it, so that's fantastic. We've got Jirachi as well, and water onto the active. And then this Reshiram Charizard is gonna be within KO range of my Zossi and V after I use this Altered Creation GX. So, I don't think that I necessarily need to acro bike at all here. I don't expect my opponent to disrupt my hand. So let's just go with the Alter Creation GX and just see what happens this next turn. I don't think that they have a great way to KO my Arceus Dalgopalkia unless they get Welder Double Fire and go in with the six energy Double Blaze GX. Um, but we've got ourselves off to a great start here. And this deck has really taken command of the metagame here on PTCGO. If you've been playing Pokemon trading card game online, Arceus Dalgopalkia with Zacian and V has completely warped the meta around itself. You're either playing mirror matches against this deck or playing against decks that, for the most part, are geared to try and beat it. And a lot of those decks are Welder decks because Welder decks can hit Zacian V for weakness, which does give you a little bit of an upper hand there. We do play two copies of Metal Frying Pan, but you don't always have access to those uh, very easily. So that is a uh, that is a consideration as well. The Welder decks are very fast and consistent, but they really just go kind of toe to toe with the Arceus Dalgopalkia deck. And I think that uh, for the most part, the Baby Blacephalon decks will emerge as some of the most popular fire variants coming out of the Malmo Regional Championships, and I expect to see an awful lot of them at the Toronto Regional Championships. So we do have the Reshiram Charizard with all of the energy built up. It looks like they are gonna be targeting down my Zacian V this turn to take that KO, and that is fine, actually, because if I can just find a 
double gust to bring up Dedenne GX or something like that. Then I can take that KO with my RC Stagopalkia and build up another Zossian V. So we will uh, aim for that. Now, unfortunately, that Reshiram Charizard does get to live safely over there. It doesn't even have to be a Dedenne GX. I can target down Reshiram Charizard, but we are down a significant number of metal saucers. And like we saw, that Volcanion just taking a real key knockout there on the Zossian V. So let's see what we can do this next turn. Definitely need double custom catcher play. So let's go with the Acrobike first and kind of see if we can uh, find it. There is a Metal Saucer, so a little too little too late on that, but well, we do have the Metal Saucer there. We've got the Metal Energy, and then let's see if we can... Oh, it doesn't even matter. I don't even need the Gust because I'll just save the Gust for the game-winning knockout. We'll just knock out the active, and we should be square so long as this Zacian does not get KO'd next turn. So let's see what we can do. We're going to Marnie, try and disrupt their hand a little bit. Now, the sketchy thing about this is that I am out of uh, Metal Saucers. So we do have to kind of bank on this not getting gusted this next turn. Uh, I could have gone for the double gust on the nine tails, which is certainly a possibility. And by gusting up the nine tails, let's see, do I have, I do have double custom catcher in the deck. By gusting up the nine tails, I can make it so that they're guaranteed not going to KO my Zacian. And then if they do bring up Reshiram Charizard to KO my Arceus to Algapalkia, I kind of have them in that checkmate situation. So that is a possibility for us. Stellar Wish here, we do find one of them. And then I could retreat and kind of go for that second one off of this uh, Jirachi here. So I think I might just mess around and try that. And we'll see if the strategy ends up buffing out for us. We don't find it, but I do have an Acrobike, which gives us the possibility of finding it. So let's go Primate Wisdom for, well, no, we Acrobike first and then we Primate Wisdom. Yes, and there is the Custom Catcher. So I think we do bring up the nine tails this turn because of the fact that I am down all of my custom catchers and then we can primate wisdom sure see one more card why not and we've got an escape board cool so we'll take this knockout with ultimate ray put some energy onto my benched Zashi and V and it looks like we only got one metal energy in the deck so that's fine I do very much anticipate seeing a knockout from the Charizard. And you know what? This could play to my advantage because if they bring up the Charizard, they're thinking, okay, maybe I don't have a KO with my Zacian, but I do feel pretty confident that I can find my final Metal Saucer to take the game. Now, if they don't take a KO on my Arceus Dalgopalkia, I could go get the Resource Management Oranguru and we could go to Resource Management Town and uh, get those um, get those Metal Saucers back into the deck, which could play very favorably for us if they don't keep up the pace because right now I have one goal and it's to knock out that Reshiram Charizard and they have all their energy on it so they have kind of made it clear that they plan on attacking with that. Now they could bamboozle me by pivoting all their energy onto a Heatran GX and taking the knockout on my Arceus Diagopalkia that way which would be pretty tough for me to handle but uh, we could just promote the Zossian V, and so long as they don't get another Vulpix down, because they can't put Vulpix and Heatran down. So if they put the Heatran down, I can promote the Zossian V, and I'll just Intrepid Sword, and then I'll go for, um, I can't go for Gust because I'm out of Gust. So it's tough. We'll see what they end up hitting here and go from there, but it does look like it's going to be a very close Finale. It looks like they have the six energy for the Charizard. They might just be committing to that. That would be the best case scenario for us. And uh, it looks like they are committing that double blaze GX, which is great. I have an opportunity to find my final metal saucer. And we could just have game on the Reshiram Charizard, who has taken that 10 damage, thankfully, from the shrine. So it looks like they're a little bit frustrated. They missed something there along the line. Let's see, is the uh, saucer at least in the deck? It is great. So we can data change before we play our supporter, which will give us the highest uh, opportunity. We can also just Primate Wisdom, the professor's research, onto the other side 
of the deck so that we know like, all right, no matter what, I'm data changing into at least a research, which does increase our odds of being able to find the card that we need. So let's go into the deck, get that out. Still just digging for the saucer. And uh, we're very deep into our deck. And we can see how easy it is to be able to find the cards that we need. Only six cards left in the deck. So we're guaranteed win on the research here to get that final saucer. And we can deal our 260 damage, taking four prizes on the Reshiram and Charizard here with Zossie and V. And we'll, uh, well played, zero cards in deck. Love it. Brave played for 260 damage in game. So a weird roundabout game, but you can see we had a lot of options at our, uh, at our disposal there. And even against a deck that can hit us for weakness, a fire deck, we were able to get that match to be in our favor. So really, uh, really strong performance there. We'll run one more. Looks like we're playing against a dark metal psychic deck. Interested to see what this deck has in store for us. LJ skills with the uh, Zorark coin. This deck has been all over the ladder. I mean, it has completely warped the metagame around itself. I think that uh, if you're not playing towards the list, you certainly are playing against towards list and have to know how to beat it. It should be all over the place at the Toronto Regional Championships this upcoming weekend. And it looks like I am playing against uh, Galarian Obstagoon. So we are going to want to get that turn one energy drop onto our Arceus Dalgapalkia and hopefully just outspeed my opponent. We do have a Rangaroo as a potential option in this matchup, which could be good for us. We've got everything we need here. So we love the energy spinner. And uh, I think that I can kind of just wait there with the Acrobike. I don't need to play Acrobike yet. So let's just grab that water energy, drop that onto the Arceus Dalgapalkia, and then we'll just Intrepid Sword to draw some cards. Now, you do have to be careful dropping water energies onto the Arceus Dagopalkia turn one going first because people are out here with crushing hammers, you know, wait and see hammers and things like that. So sometimes you're gonna wanna just go with the metal energy first. If you suspect that there is a wait and see hammer in your opponent's deck, uh, you might just lead with the metal energy and then go the water turn two just to be on the safe side. Now. Against Galarian Obstagoon, I'm not worried about any sort of wait and see hammer, crushing hammer action going on. If they bust out the turn one wait and see hammer on me, I will just be pretty salty, but I don't think that they're gonna have that. Looks like this particular version of Galarian Obstagoon is running Sil Valley GX, and I think that that is totally fine. Having a, uh, a two prize Pokemon on the bench that I can gust and KO for three prizes sounds a-okay to me. But, you know, you can't really underestimate the Galarian Obstagoon deck. And they've got multiple, um, multiple Sil Valleys. It looks like they are trying to set up. So I'm not going to try and uh, say that this is going to be favored yet. But I think uh, I do love to see plenty of Pokemon on my opponent's side of the field. So that does feel good. Let's just go in with Acrobike first, I think. And, well... Yeah, we could, uh, I could quick ball, I could get myself, well, we'll just, we'll just acrobike first, see what we do. Quick ball, get myself a Rangaroo, then I could guarantee myself a metal in the discard pile with acrobike. I could discard, no, 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 yeah, yeah, we'll acrobike first, let's just go there. We got ourselves another quick ball, it's fine, I don't think that I need to data change. So let's just uh, discard the Shrine of Punishment, we can get ourselves probably the Rangaroo, Primate Wisdom is going to be one of the most valuable cards for us, so we'll grab that. And I'm not gonna use it yet, but will be something that we probably utilize in the next couple turns. And I actually will use it for one thing. So we're gonna go here and I want the saucers to be uh, like on the other side of my deck, right? So we're gonna put that into the deck and then we can shuffle the order of the deck to make sure that I don't top deck it, right? Which is really neat for us. So we can just go get ourselves another Jirachi or even the resource management or Rangaroo, both those are pretty good. And now I can acro bike and just be pretty confident that we're not gonna get back that uh, that card we did not want to see. So we got the metal frying pan. I've got the orang roof to put that custom catcher back on top of my deck next turn before we go in for this research, which we could have played this turn, but too many good cards in my hand. 
that I didn't want to get rid of, and we didn't need to research in order to use the Altered Creation GX. So we're just gonna go with that. And it looks like Sil Valley GX is on the field with its Rebel GX. Can do 50 damage for each of my bench Pokemon and then Turbo Drive. Really probably gonna be there for the Gyro G, -G, -G, -G unit ability so that they can uh, retreat their basic Pokemon for free. As we see, they took advantage of, got that Galarian Zigzagoon right on out of there into Jirachi. And they're gonna start using Untamed Shout to place damage counters. Now this is a little bit scary because they could take a KO on my Arceus Diagopalkia this turn with something like a Yveltal GX. And maybe that this, maybe this version of Galarian Obstagoon is trying to be more aggressive with cards like uh, maybe uh, Yveltal GX, maybe they play Bead with Sableye V as well to try and take some quick knockouts. I think that actually Sil Valley GX could be a pretty good card to pair with a supporter like Bead, because Bead requires that you just have a lot going in your hand already. You have to have an energy to attach for turn, um, you know, just naturally, and then you also have to have a bonus energy and the Bead supporter card, and you have to have stuff worth attaching to in play. So the Bead, uh, Bead requires that you have a very stable board position already, and I think that the Silvallis do help to kind of promote that stable board position. So I do want to look out for the possibility that they're playing bead in the deck and that they could whip up a Sable IV out of nowhere or something like that. This does not seem like the kind of version of the deck that is trying to just go with the lone Galarian Obstagoon, though they do have Stealthy Hoods galore out here so that they can uh, prevent their Obstagoons from being um, fee owned away with the Whirlpool Suction ability. So we'll see what they have coming up next. Are they gonna take a knockout? Do they have it? They got Ditto Prism Star, not something that we typically see in Obstagoon decks either. They're gonna to have to pass, which is fine with me. And we will Primate Wisdom, that Custom Catcher, onto the other side of the deck. Not seeing any dolls or anything like that, which is not super standard for these decks either. And then I can just put another Zacian down and research. We do find a Metal Energy. No metal energy in the discard pile yet. I can do one here. We'll uh, get that down. And I can grab myself the resource management and Ranguru just in case I need it. Uh, we can use one of these metal saucers onto this. And uh, we will ultimate ray take two prizes and put our three energy onto our other Zacian V. So we're fully stabilized now. We should be good to go. Uh, I am a little bit concerned that, uh, you know, the Arceus Dagopalkia will get knocked out this upcoming turn, but it should be fine at this point. And we've got so many Gust options. Great Catcher can bring up Cell Valley GX and uh, the Double Custom Catcher can play around the Obstagoon. So unless my opponent completely clears their board of Pokemon, which they cannot do, I mean, they would have, well, I don't want to say cannot. They could hit three Super Scoop Ups and they could clear their board, which would be very strong. But I think that, uh, generally speaking, the obstruct attack is probably best paired with uh, with just dolls and things like that so that you can completely whisk away your entire board state and then just leave a lone obstagoon attacking with obstruct. Now that does kind of uh, hinge on your opponent not playing any evolved Pokemon, though there are ways. Okay, and here we go. Yes, they're going to Rosa for the Giovanni's Exile. So they are going for it um, that way which uh, is interesting. So I think that this turn, we know that they are getting ready to use Giovanni's Exile next turn to try and get all of their board position cleared. And they have used these Silvalli GXs to try and uh, proctor this perfect board state. Fortunately for me, I've got the absolute perfect answer to that. I can great catcher up a, uh, a Silvalli, bring that up, and then we're just gonna double custom catcher up the Obstagoon, and we're gonna knock that out. So now they're in a really brutal spot because <laughs> I've just got, uh, you know, yeah, heartbreak. Like, right, there's uh, almost nothing they can do uh, about that. And uh, if they Giovanni's exile away these Silvallis, they're just gonna lose. So there's nothing that they can do now, and I put myself in just a really commanding position to be able to win, so. The great catcher, double custom catcher play, resetting the obstruct attack effect 
right? And uh, that is a uh, really important rule of the Pokemon trading card game is that when a Pokemon reaches the bench, all effects of attacks, all effects on that Pokemon are completely reset. So we were able to reset the obstruct attack effect by putting it to the bench and then bringing it back out to the active. And that play is not common in decks. You don't always get to pull that off. The double gust play, especially in a format where, you know, one of your gust cards takes uh, two item cards to play at the same time. But it is something that uh, is definitely valuable to know in uh, the Pokemon trading card game. So it looks like they do have a triple acceleration energy so that they can go in with Silvalli GX and uh, and take a knockout on my Arceus Dalga Palkia. But if they do that, they are just admitting defeat because I couldn't just promote my Zacian V and take three prizes on the Silvalli GX with Brave Blade. So a valiant attempt by my opponent. They did have a strategy to clear their board, uh, but it was too little too late. The Giovanni's Exile uh, just not quick enough with the Rosa grabbing it, and uh, now they have to take a knockout. But it is uh, going to be GG's because we've got Zacian V well played to my opponent. Very creative take on the Obstagoon deck, and you love to see some new uh, life being, you know, kind of breathed into these decks, especially as uh, the meta starts to warp and really. Uh, take into consideration the popular versions of Obstagoon. We saw that Mawile GX was being played in order to counter Obstagoon and bring Pokemon down from Obstagoon's hand into play. Uh, Giovanni's Exile certainly helps to play around the Mawile GX by just putting them all to the discard pile instead of whisking them up to the hand with cards like Super Scoop Up or maybe the Verizian GX. That's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and check me out on Twitch. We stream Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday on twitch.tv slash tricky gym. We just reached 9,000 followers on Twitch. So big thank you to everybody who helped us reach that goal and everybody who's checked out the Twitch channel. Just reached 50,000 subs here on YouTube. So thank you so much to everybody who subbed to the channel here on YouTube. YouTube. And if you haven't already, it's never been a better time because we are aiming for that 100,000 sub mark, which, uh, you know, could take me an eternity. But, uh, you know, with your help, it could be even faster. Also, make sure to check out FullGripGames.com for all your trading card game singles. Supporting the store by shopping at FullGripGames.com directly supports the content that I create here on Tricky Gym. Also, make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery via email. Y'all take it easy and have a great day. Peace.